Good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Oh, that's that's better, huh? Okay. Um, let me just let me just see who I'm talking to here. Who here um, builds websites for clients? All right, that's a lot of you. And how many how many people here uh, are here because you have your own website and you want to learn how to work on it better? All right. All right, so, so I'll make sure I, I touch on a, a mix of, of things for you. Um, so the title of my talk is Choosing a Lean WordPress Theme for Future Growth. Uh, and so someone, someone asked me before I uh, started, they asked if I was selling anything with, with these uh, logos and stuff at the bottom. I'm not, don't worry. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you about that as I go through this. Um, all right, so there's been the there's a lot of analogies floating around that a lot of you have heard before as far as themes go and how it could be like I heard the last speaker was talking about painting a room and um, I've also heard the car analogy. So the car analogy is what I'm going with today. And um, so so if you were to uh, buy a car, what would you think if the if the car shop handed you all these pans of, cans of paint? and said, here's all your options. You can uh, spray paint it however you want. You'd probably say, uh, you know, you stick with what they have, or you'll go with the professional. If you, I mean, most of us would do that. If not, you know, your car might turn out something like this. <laughs> now, what if, what if they said that there's 24 um, steering wheels included? <laughs> You'd have to choose from those steering wheels. Can you pick one? Um, now, here's here's what I'm getting at is there's a there's a saying it's in the WordPress.org uh, directory website that as far as the philosophy of WordPress goes and it's decisions not options. So so as people building sites for others, um, it's usually best to try to make some decisions for the consumer, so that you know options sound good, but if you've experienced this, most of the time people just get overwhelmed with the options and they don't know what to do once they get this theme with 5,000 different sliders and everything. And a lot of times you might have these 24 steering wheels, but then eventually what happens is this. <laughs> As those steering wheels or sliders or other features included don't work like you thought they would, um, you start to have to put some band-aids on your website, patch it up. Who, who here has been through something like this? Anybody? <laughs> what's, what's that? Mad Max. Mad Max, OK. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, go, so you don't want your website to be like this, duct taped together. Um, I like the some of the Pringles. <laughs> don't put a Pringles can in your car. This is not. Um, and if you keep doing things like this, eventually, <laughs> it might not be that bad, but you don't want your website to blow up. So. <laughs> What should a theme be? Um, I got this quote. It says, a public WordPress theme, free or paid, is supposed to pull data from the database and display it. That is all. So that's the basic problem. It's, it's very difficult nowadays to look for a theme for yourself or for a client and find a theme that's just a theme. Because what sells is including these thousand features. And really, those features should be in a plugin. And I'm going to go over some reasons for that. So in today's theme marketplace, if you've been shopping around or looked at themes, as most of you have probably, you see seven sliders included, 50 home page options, 1,000 plus short codes. It's like an arms race to see who can have the most, you know? But more is not better. <laughs> so what's so bad about that? Stability. Plugin conflicts happen. The more, the more is in your theme, the more JavaScript files, 
just the more that's going on, the more risk of things not interacting with each other the way they should. Um, just Google one of, if you, let, let's throw out some big name themes around here. Anybody? <laughs> Divi Avada. Studio Press. Studio Press. So not all of these, but but some of a lot of them, especially. Uh, I don't know if I should name stuff here. I'm being recorded. <laughs> um, but basically, Google your favorite theme and plus plugin conflicts. So let's just say Aveda plugin conflicts or Aveda theme conflicts. You'll see forum after forum, post after post of problems with the theme conflicting with some well-known plugin. Um, so that's one thing you should do before you buy a theme is to check, you know, search for things like that, see what kind of conflicts are happening. Because if there's a conflict with the theme you want to buy with a popular plugin, like say Yoast SEO, you probably want to avoid that theme. Security issues. Um, also, the more that's going on with your theme, the more chances there are of there being some gap or hole or vulnerability. Um, one example of this over the past year or two was the Revolution slider problem. Um, who's heard of what happened there? Revolution slider was bundled with many themes on ThemeForest and there was a vulnerability and a lot, like thousands of sites got hacked because if a plugin is bundled with your theme in a certain way, like within your theme folder, not like as a separate plugin, then for that plugin to be updated, the author has to update the theme or you have to update the plugin manually inside of it. So you want to look for like plugins are okay, but it's better to have them external, like install them yourself, update them yourself. They, they sell these plugins bundled with themes as a feature to get you to buy it, but it's really not doing you a good service. Site speed, loading time goes up when your theme is bigger and has more files being called. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, just the sheer size of your theme. Uh, a lean theme, as I would describe it, is usually under one megabyte in size, often much smaller, less than 500 kilobytes. Some of these big mega themes that are really popular, it'll be like 15 megabytes, the folder with all of everything in it. So you can imagine all of those things. Now, s sometimes they're getting smarter and they don't load everything, but still, you want to try to look for a theme that has a lower size. <clears throat> so things to avoid. I might have covered some of this already. So built-in short codes. Who's, who here has uh, seen a site, whether it was yours or someone else, where you go to a live website and you see short codes all over the page? Anybody? <laughs> So that, that, that can happen with, I've, I've had it happen on one site where a plugin wasn't updated, and I just updated the plugin and then it. I don't even know what a short code is. Okay, um, someone asked what a short code is. So a short code is, uh, it's some kind of keyword or phrase that's in a bracket, and you can put that into your, into the WordPress editor, and behind the scenes, that short code is, is uh, executing a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's kind of like a macro or like a shortcut. To, so a lot, of, a lot of themes that you buy today, they advertise how many different short codes they have. So the, the problem with having the short codes in your theme is later if you go to switch your theme and you've built your whole site around all these short codes, you switch the theme and those short codes won't work in the new theme. Um, and then you'll have something like this. So actual visitors to the page come and see the short codes rather than the content that they're supposed to display. Now, short codes are not always bad. Um, it's okay to use short codes if it's in the form of a plugin, because if it's a plugin, you can change your theme and those short codes will still remain. Um, 
I already talked about bundled plugins to avoid. Uh, custom post types. So a lot of themes will include a portfolio or events or something in there. And there's just really no reason to include because there's plugins that have portfolio post types. Um, there's plenty of events plugins. So I realize some people here might not understand what a custom post type is. Um, basically, in your WordPress dashboard, uh, you'll usually see like, you know, post, pages, media. If you install a theme and then all of a sudden you see another menu item there with like portfolio or events or something else, it's your theme was creating a custom post type. So you want those to be in plugins. <laughs> um, let me, this isn't in my slides, but let me just give you an example. So there was a there was a client I had who was using Divi, and Divi has some good things about it and some not so good. <laughs> so I didn't really want to work with this site with Divi, but I helped the person anyway. And they, they wanted me to add some frequently asked questions, an FAQ for a doctor's office. And Divi has a built-in short code for FAQ. But then he hands me a Word, or he emails me a Word document, 15 pages of FAQs. This guy had like over 100 different FAQs. So I told him, I was like, look, if you ever change your theme, all of those, all of that work that we put into using the Divi short codes is going to be gone. You're going to have to redo it. So even though Divi had the FAQ built into it, I told him we're going to use an external plugin, like an FAQ plugin, and I, I put them all in there. So, so it's like he's using Divi, but I told him not to use part of its functionality. <laughs> so. Um, are you saying, sh are you saying short codes inside of functions no, at PHP? No, 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 no. Okay. Custom post types. Oh, um, you mean if you put them in in there yourself? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people do that, and as long as you know what you're doing. It's okay. I mean, if if you're if you're if you're a developer and you've I I've, I do that sometimes myself. If I'm coding a site and I want everything, and I'll I'll put a custom post type in there. But it's better it's better to make your own plugin. Put put your custom post types into a functionality plugin. Um, a functionality plugin can be um, unique to fun functions that are unique to your site that may need to transfer over like when you choose a new theme. So to, to answer your question, if you do put cu custom post types in your theme, when you switch, you would lose them, but since you put them there, hopefully you'd be aware enough to know you, to know you need to copy and paste that into the new theme. Yeah. But is, is what whether it's whether it's people here who don't know how to do that, or if you're building sites for a client, um, you know, is I guess it could be different if you if it's a long-term client, but especially if it's someone you're just doing a website for and you might not be helping them a year or two from now, and then they go to change the theme, and they don't know that you put this in the functions.php. So it's. Whoever takes a, whoever takes over should figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll have a, uh, I'll have some questions at the end. So let me, let me get through this, and then we'll we'll have some questions in just a few minutes. Um, okay. So this is controversial, <laughs> but built-in page builders. <laughs> um, I, I was almost hesitant to, to uh, bring this up because I know people can get up in arms about this. But what I'm proposing is that you should avoid themes where everything is built with the page builder. So, so if the theme is completely dependent on Visual Composer or some other one, I'm not saying never do it. Like if it's if it's. Uh, Let's say like an event site that's only going to be up for a few months, or you're doing a landing page, or you know something small. But if you're going to build out a full website, 
using this page builder, you're really setting yourself or your client up for some painful, some painful uh, migrations like in a year or two when they want a new theme. Um, I have exceptions here. <laughs> so, so everything we've talked about, the custom post types, the short codes, those things are okay when you're looking for a premium theme. If, uh, if they're included in a separate plugin that, that the auth either the author uh, wrote themselves or recommends, as long as it's a plugin that you're installing and updating. Make sure you can update it. The other reason to be weary of the premium bundled plugins is the license. So, um, you know, the license comes with the theme. So if you don't, if in a year or something, if you don't renew your theme, the plugin license is going to expire too. So that's another reason to keep those separate. Um, so my basic premise here, the title of it was to build um, uh, choosing, choosing a lean WordPress theme for future growth. So what I try to tell people and tell my clients is, is like, look, you want all of these things right now. Maybe you can't afford what you want, so you're trying to like make it work like with this like forty dollar theme, um, but it's it's short sighted because in a year or two from now you're just gonna have to redo everything. So I'm trying to I'm trying to tell people to start with a solid foundation, start with a simple site, even if it doesn't have all the bells and whistles you want. If you can't afford that now, or you don't have the time or the skills to do it. And then as you go along, you can build onto it, add functionality as you go with plugins. Or if a plugin can't do it or you can't do it, you could hire a developer to help with one part of your theme. <clears throat> um, continuing with what's the alternative. Um, who here builds their own custom themes? Okay, and of those, who uses a starter theme? Anybody use underscores? Okay, underscore. So, so a starter theme is um, is basically a place to start with, so you can build a theme. You have to know some code to to work with it. But it's basically a starting point so that you're not completely starting with a blank slate, but it doesn't have any of the extra junk. So some popular ones are roots, underscores, a theme hybrid. Another thing that, you know, I, I, it's just recently that I started thinking about this, but um, I'm starting to really see the value in the WordPress.org theme directory because they vet their themes and they don't allow all of this bad stuff that I was telling you about. So it's kind of like the Wild West out there when you go to buy a premium theme at a theme shop. You never know what you're getting or if they're following standards, but if you get something from WordPress.org, you at least know that some skilled developers have had their eyes on it and have approved it to be in there. So I would not, just because it's free, I would not knock using those free themes. It, they're better than a lot of premium themes, honestly. <laughs> and if you're buying a premium theme, be very selective. We've talked about that a little bit. Here's some things to, to check premium themes before you buy. So check the demo in different browsers and devices. Make sure Make sure it looks how it should. Make sure, you know, if there's any glitches in the demo, chances are that's going to show up on your site when you install it. Check the demo's speed. One, there's many places you can check speed, but webpagetest.org is one. Um, I'm not 100% privy to how that works. Like the, the test on the demo might not be the same as your site, so. You might want to test it again after you've installed it on your server. After purchasing your theme, there's a few things I would do right out the gate before you spend too much time on it. And that is immediately turn on debug, um, check the debug log, see how many errors show up in that theme. If there are a lot of errors going on, um, 
you you might want to contact uh, the theme author and just it, it's, some errors are just warnings, <laughs> but uh, some of some of them are can be big problems. So that's something to look at. I'd also install some plugins to see if there's any conflicts. Also check the debug log again. And also check for JavaScript errors. So you can do that in Chrome. Um, developer tools is built into Chrome. So you can just right click on, uh, on an element and do inspect element. How many people here have done that? Okay. Um, so when you do that, there's a tab that says console. So if you do that, you can see some JavaScript errors, which may or may not be actually displaying on the page. All right, so, so here's the thing that I've actually been working on and excited about, and somebody asked if I was selling things. I'm not selling my own themes. But, so I, I have clients, I freelance, and I much prefer to build my own custom sites for clients, but sometimes they don't have the budget, so we need to go with a theme. And then there's always the question, well, what theme should I use? And a lot of times I'm like sending them a list of links, I'm searching again to see if anything new is out there. So I was like, you know what, I need a, I need a place for myself to send people where I can just say, you know, the themes and the shops on this website, I recommend. So you can pick something from that. <laughs> um, I'm going to exit real quick to go to the site. OK, so okay, so this is, this is the site I just put up last night, late last night. <laughs> just, just in time for the, for the conference. So this is where I plan to send my clients and tell them if you're looking for a pre-made theme to go here. I have recommended shops of themes that meet some of the criteria that I've talked about with you here. So you can, some of these might be familiar to a lot of you, Studio Press, Array, Theme Foundry, Theme Lab. Um, so I only have nine right now. I'm planning to add more to it. I have some starter themes at the bottom, underscores, roots, theme hybrid that I mentioned. So please uh, take a look at this when you go home. And if anybody here know, what's that? Um, I'll, go right, I'll go right back to it, hold on. So it's leanwpthemes.com. Do you recommend what WP puts out when they send you the number 13 or 14 or whatever we're up to now? Do you recommend their themes? I'm sorry. The She's talking about the oh, the, 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 the default themes, like the 2015? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Th those, are, those are nice, solid themes. Okay. Uh, it just depends what what you're looking for in your website. Um, if it says if it's simply a blog, those will definitely do great. You can turn those into a full-fledged website if you uh, have the development skills to do it. Um, yeah, that's um, especially because those are the official ones. Um, and I was saying earlier, a lot, not everything, but there's a lot of lot of themes in the WordPress directory that are good, and they've been vetted. So, but not directly as a child. What's that? Used as a child, though, not directly. Oh, um, he's asking. No, I'm, should you? I'm he's saying she recommending. Should, she should be sure to. Okay. And make a child before she. Right. So, so somebody, somebody. I'm just telling it for the sake of the microphone. Somebody uh, mentioned child themes. So yes, if you're if you're um, customizing a theme such as 2015 from WordPress, always make a child theme, um, where it's it's a separate folder and you're you're changing CSS and things like that in the child theme, so that when WordPress updates the main theme, you don't lose your changes. Um, that, that's, a, that's a little beyond, how to make a child theme is a little beyond the scope of this. No, you need to do it. But if you Google how to make a child theme in WordPress, you'll find tons of articles on it. What a mom theme and a daddy theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Okay. Any other questions? There's a plugin to create a child theme. There's a plugin to create a child theme? Okay. <laughs> I hadn't heard of that one. One more time. There's a session for child themes tomorrow. Oh. Oh, there's a session for child themes tomorrow. Okay. I'll just tell you, in short, the basic that you need for a child theme is an index.php file and a style.css. And you don't need the index? Okay. Okay. Well, probably better to Google it than. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, what, what starter theme do you like to use? Um, okay, so the, for the past year, I've been starting with the Genesis framework, which is not totally a starter theme. There, there's, there's differences of opinion. Some people think there's too much stuff in there, but compared to most of the other themes out there, it's pretty, it's, I, I would say it's pretty lean compared to most. Um, so I, I've been doing custom sites starting with the Genesis framework. I'm just starting to work more with underscores. I haven't done it for a live client project yet, but just playing around with it on my own. Um, so under underscores, th those three, there's three on that website there yeah. that I, I haven't used a ton myself except just playing around with them. But those are the ones that I hear more and more often than anything. Very yeah. And there, there's there's some other there's some other starter themes based off of underscores. This guy over here, Alex on the side, <laughs> has one has one called he has one called Some Make It Neat. Some like it neat. It's in the WordPress repository. And he, he includes some other things like like sass and bourbon and um, gulp and other things like that. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, he's asking. He's asking if there's any specific shortcode plugins that I like. Um, if you find one, let me know. <laughs> I've used several, and they're they're all the ones I've tried are all okay. Ultimate shortcodes. They they've they've got a lot of stuff in it. Honestly, I'm. Uh, that might be something I'd like if if I submit a plugin to the repository myself. I might want to build my own shortcodes plugin. Um, what, what I've usually done is just, I'll just make my own plugin in a client theme and just add my own shortcodes. So it's not that hard to add a shortcode with your own code. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Well, I guess that's it. Thank you very much.